Hi, welcome to my talk about uh, dependency injection with RoboJuice. Um, despite the talks uh, has uh, RoboJuice in its title, and I will be uh, using RoboJuice throughout all my examples, uh, I'm not uh, advocating RoboJuice here. So for me, it's perfectly okay if you use any other uh, dependency injection. Uh, but I, what I want uh, you to, to realize and is um, that dependency injection will definitely help you to write apps that are more reliable uh, in less code and uh, even in less time. Uh, before we start, uh, let me just uh, make a small commercial break. I did this app. Uh, some of you maybe saw my presentation yesterday. Um, it's called GrooveGrid. Uh, if you don't know it, it's, uh, it's for making interactive music. Uh, it's not targeted towards professional musicians, but uh, every one of us. Uh, it lets you um, rearrange um, pre-composed uh, tracks and have fun. So yeah, I'd love if you uh, downloaded it, uh, twittered about it, blogged about it, uh, maybe wrote in magazines, and yeah, okay. Now, dependency injection. Um, anyone here used uh, any dependency injection frameworks before? Ah, nice, nice. Uh, anyone used Juice or even RoboJuice? Okay, well, <laughs> um, then most of you know uh, dependency injection. I will keep this short. Dependency injection is about uh, how you uh, wire up your objects. So in an object-oriented program, you have objects, and they somehow interact with each other. And uh, dependency injection um, takes off the burden of uh, finding which other objects one object has to talk to from the objects itself. And uh, it's done by, by a central uh, component that can be centrally configured. Um, why this is cool is, is the main topic of my talk. <laughs> so um, I've, I've tried here to, to um, bring together like the concepts and, and what I know uh, about um, available um, dependency injection frameworks. Um, yeah, dependency injection kind of is, is a sub-concept of inversion of control, but this is not too interesting. More interesting is that uh, RoboJuice is um, built upon uh, Google Juice. So if you know Google Juice, you will quite uh, quickly be familiar with RoboJuice. Um, then there are other uh, dependency injection frameworks you may have heard of or used. Uh, Spring, or to be more precise, Spring Core is uh, maybe the most uh, famous of them. Then there is Pico Container, and uh, I know of Plexus, which is used by Maven, the Maven project. Um, for Android, uh, there are as to my knowing, yeah. there's Android annotations um, and Dagger, and of course RoboJuice. So um, use any of them. <laughs> um, in this talk, I will try to, to somewhat prove to you that um, dependency injection can make your code uh, more concise. Read, uh, you will have to write less code to achieve the same thing. Uh, it will make your code more modular with the hope that you can maybe even reuse some of it. And uh, last but really not least, it will make your code much easier to test and uh, this property can't be overestimated, I think. I have to switch the slides here manually every time. It's a bit stupid. Okay, uh, let's just start with an example. 
um, if you had a, a juice-less activity or robo-juice-less, uh, you would normally have to, of course, implement activity or one of its descendants. And then you would uh, somehow in your onCreate uh, uh, call uh, set content view because you mostly always have some content to view. <laughs> um, let's have a look on how this looks. Is there a microphone? I can hold it by hand. <laughs> no? Okay. How this would look in, in uh, RoboJuice, um, it boils down to these two lines. Uh, in, instead of activity, we extend robo activity, which in turn extends uh, activity. And uh, we don't have to we don't have to um, do any um, set content view because this is done by the by the annotation content view. And uh, in, in this simple case, we don't need any uh, onCreate method at all because uh, the only thing we did was uh, invoking super and setting the content view. Okay. Uh, in almost every uh, activity, you will somehow have to interact with your view object. So you will use find... Uh, find view by ID to, to get a view and then you will have to uh, cast it uh, to the appropriate type and uh, you will have some attribute holding that um, view object. In, um, in RoboJuice you s just have the, the attribute and the annotation tells the RoboJuice where to get the um, view from. And um, one thing I left out here is um, they are not semantically equivalent, the two examples, because um, the RoboJuice uh, example will throw an uh, exception on injection time if uh, the, the view is not defined. So uh, to make it equivalent, you would have to make a null check in your uh, juiceless activity or you could alternatively say to RoboJuice that the view is optional. So let's make this quick. Uh, you may uh, want to get some strings. Uh, it's uh, analogous. The same for um, system services. Um, RoboJuice knows how, and this is one of the extensions uh, and the view thing, of course. Uh, to, to uh, Google Juice, uh, it knows about uh, Android services and how to resolve them. Um, okay, you may also want uh, to, to have dependency on, on code you wrote yourself, of course, and not only to, to um, Android provided stuff. And um, you could use the inject to. What's interesting here is um, uh, our sum controller needs a reference to, to our activity that's, that's referencing it. And uh, in, in the classical uh, way, you would simply pass it uh, this, uh, this reference. Um, you don't have to do this in, uh, when you use RoboJuice because um, uh, we we use a inject annotation in the activity in the some controllers um, constructor, and this injects the activity. This may seem like magic now to you, but it has to do with um, um, all code in in an Android app always running in a context. And this is either the context of the application itself or is, it is the context of an activity or a service or a broadcast receiver, I think. Um, and in this case, uh, this constructor is running in the, in the context of the activity that is uh, getting uh, injected with it. So uh, the activity is, uh, is the activity here. We could also, because activity uh, implements context, as you all will know. Um, 
here I just uh, put put two complete uh, examples together to give you an an idea uh, what the differences are. So uh, we we uh, had 15 lines of code without juice and uh, seven with it. So it's definitely more concise. And we can put a check mark on our first uh, property. Bindings. Um, until now, everything uh, worked without any configuration. Um, but there may be uh, situations where, where RoboJuice uh, or Juice don't know where to get the dependency from. Take for example, you have an interface and uh, two implementations of it. If you now depend on the interface, it cannot possibly know uh, which implementation you mean. So uh, you will have to somehow tell it. And uh, for this you do, um, um, you, you define so-called modules by extending this abstract module and, um, and in, in the configure uh, method of this module you simply do your binding definition. This is how, uh, these are the rules that tell RoboJuice how to uh, resolve dependencies. Um, one of the simplest cases uh, would be to say, okay, uh, whenever uh, someone needs a ICE interface some service, uh, then give it uh, a new some service dam dummy. I think this is almost fluent. So, um, if we wanted uh, to to give all the uh, to, to give one object to all. So we now had um, every dependency creating a new object. And this is always the same object and we can configure it here. We can say uh, new sum service uh, and it has two parameters that we can define. So this gives us uh, a way to configure our code while defining the bindings. Um, if we wanted uh, Every, uh, if we wanted the first case and the two cases the second combined, we could use these uh, these provider methods. These are simple methods that get uh, annotated with provides, and uh, they could also receive injected objects. So this is really a powerful tool to to configure your your bindings. So uh, binding allows us to, to wire up our components and to, to, to configure them in the, the same run. So confusing that I don't have the same slides here than I have there. Um, okay, let's, let's um, look at another. This is... Um, this is quite nice and it, it would even suffice to, to say, okay, this gives us more modularity. But um, RoboJuice goes even farther. Um, let's look at an example. Um, some of you ever uh, integrated um, Google Analytics in their app? Yeah. Um, when, you, when you integrate Google Analytics, what you have to do is basically um, say we say we want to track every view of of a of a screen. This is in, in a in a first approximation every invocation on on resume of of our activity that represents the page. So what you would do is uh, you would have to in in the on create you would uh, initialize your your session uh, your. Analytics session in OnCreate, you would say, okay, now check the page view, which is, and uh, in OnDestroy, finally, you would have to close the session again. And then you would, of course, need an attribute to hold your session in your activity, and maybe some, some utility code. Um, and this, um, 
I, I call this a blow up of your of your activity because you've you've just um, put the code for Google Analytics in an activity that has a completely different responsibility from tracking views and you've scattered it all over it and it's it's really hard to find the code that belongs to Google Analytics and it's it's polluting your your other code so what you would actually want to do is pull it out and have it in in one place and just somehow plug it in um, yeah I think um, this leads to a to a, a anti pattern called the God class because if you do more such things uh, your your activity bloats up to a giant monster that does somehow does everything and, and nobody can comprehend anymore um, it's bad for coherence because uh, you don't have your your analytics code in in one place but scattered all around your activity um, it's it's very tightly coupled to to the activity yeah and of course no separation of concern provided here um, here RoboJuice comes comes to the rescue with a concept uh, uh, called uh, events. So you could, we could pull our, out our code for Google Analytics into a new class, and uh, we would define methods, for example, this onCreate, and uh, we would annotate it with observes and onCreate event. And uh, if we injected this class into our activity, this method would get called every time the onCreate of the activity gets called. Uh, it, the, don't, don't get confused by the name onCreate. The name could be anything. The, the, the dispatcher is the create event name. Like. Um, and uh, everything that would be left of, of our analytics code in the activity would be this single line. We would simply inject this. I called it analytics mixin. Okay, so I'm missing a slide. Never mind. Um, so we got loose coupling. We got high coherence because uh, everything uh, activity is now in the activity, and everything analytics is now in the analytics mixin. Um, and the centralized wiring and configuration we got before. So there's a slide missing. Okay. Um, there should have been a slide with, uh, we can put a check mark on the modularity. <laughs> so uh, what's about testability or uh, easier to test? Uh, what is testability An anyways? Uh, I have uh, uh, copied this from Wikipedia. It says, okay, testability is, uh, is uh, governed by these seven properties. Um, I'm not going to, to chew them all up here. But uh, yeah, the st sticking point is if, if you want to unit test, and I'm talking about real unit tests, not the instrumentation tests that run on devices and somehow do everything and nothing. Uh, but if you, if you want to do real unit tests, you somehow have to, to separate the unit that you want to test from the rest of, of your code. So normally you would, um, you would um, resolve all the dependencies of it and, and, and put in mock objects, so dummies, fakes, and, and stuff. Um, and um, this, this can be a problem if, if, your, if your unit that you want to test, or your component, um, creates its, the dependencies itself. If it calls a new some service, it's difficult to, to put in a mock use service. Um, the same holds true if it, uh, if it uh, gets uh, dependencies via static references or it gets a static reference to the application object which is a factory and asks it for its dependencies. You always have the problem, how do you isolate it? And uh, 
with dependency injection in general, uh, it's simple, use dependency injection. Because if, if the stuff is anyways dependent, uh, injected from, from the outside, you can inject it um, in your tests, but in, in this case you're injecting your mock objects. Um, okay, this is an example test. Um, don't be confused by its length. The only thing interesting here uh, on the first view, uh, do you see the, the highlighting in the middle? Where I do cut some DAO, gleich mock DAO. Yeah, this is, uh, this is how I mostly do my tests. Um, you maybe maybe you wondered why I was um, given my my attributes uh, the protected scope in um, uh, in the previous slides because I tend to say okay if my test is in the same package then in in the test I can simply assign it to the attribute and this is uh, yeah, one could call it poor man's injection. Um, of course, there, there are other ways, if you don't like this, uh, my attributes are not private, but protected stuff. Um, juice, uh, RoboJuice allows you to, to create a so-called injector during your test with, with all your uh, binding definitions and then just say, okay, but for those uh, dependencies, I want mock objects, I want you to use mock objects. Um, okay, but this was a bit too complex for this. Uh, presentation. Um, okay, some words to, to the rest of the code. I'm using Mokito here. Uh, anyone used uh, Mokito? Any mock frameworks? Yeah. If not, uh, use them. It, it's make, it makes it easy to, to, to write mocks. Yeah. And uh, another thing I'm using here is uh, Roboelectric. Um, which is very necessary for Android development. Uh, Danny, I don't know if he's here. Yeah, he just gave a, a talk about uh, Roboelectric, so I won't be talking too much about it. Basically, what Roboelectric, uh, when you try to run a, a, an Android uh, code in, in the JVM, even a unit test, you will always get runtime exceptions saying stop exclamation mark. Because uh, when you run in the JVM, uh, as uh, opposed to on the device, um, you are not using the real Java classes, but the classes provided with the SDK. And all that those classes do is uh, slap you with an runtime exception every time you invoke anything on them. Unfortunately, even in the static constructors, so you cannot even declare them, so they're used somehow. It's um, and Roboelectric takes off that burden. Um, what it does, it is, it, um, it's a test runner, and it installs another um, class loader, and it loads uh, so-called shadow classes that mimic the Android classes and that behave more benevolently, so they, it, they don't uh, throw exceptions, but mostly do nothing and be silent. And what I like to use them for is you can simply say mock Android context or mock an intent. Uh, you can't do this without RoboElectric because you would even then get an exception. So yeah. So uh, if we have a quick review of, of, the, of the Wikipedia definition. Um, being able to inject mock objects and then uh, gives us the, the first three um, properties. We can control, our, uh, control the state of our code because um, yeah, we are putting in these mock objects that um, yeah. we have observability if we want and uh, uh, yeah, isolatability. Um, separation of concerns, I talked of it before. It's easier to write code that separates. Um, understandability, yeah. Um, 
if you have better separation of concern and you have less code, it's it's simply yeah easier to understand code that is uh, clearer. Automatability. Okay, yeah, we we can now run tests we could not have written without dependency injection. And uh, heterogeneity, I don't know if it applies here, sorry. But I think this suffices to say we got the third um, check mark. So I could say QED. <laughs> um, if you want to dive into the matter a bit deeper, I've, I've collected some references. Um, the first is, is the article by Martin Fowler, who maybe uh, every one of you has heard of. It's, it's like he defined what dependence injection is, I think. <laughs> uh, then Juice, RoboJuice, um, yeah, the Wikipedia article. Um, Mokito for mocking, you could also use Easy Mock or JMock, I like Mokito best. Uh, Roboelectric, and of course, my contact data. Uh, yeah, you can write me, uh, follow me on Twitter. I wouldn't mind if you did. Oh, yeah. So, we have time for questions, I think. Okay.